Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. I hope you're well. In today's short screencast, I'll give you a little sublime text tip. We'll look at the Lampens Design Preloader and we'll also look at the SVG Pocket Guide. Okay, so let's uh, go straight into it. As you know, I'm a big fan of sublime text. I like the simplicity of the UI and uh, there is not many distractions. You can concentrate just on the coding. It has the great uh, minimap on the right where you can quickly scroll through the whole document. And on the left, uh, if you drag the whole folder in, you'll see the files organized uh, in the folders. You can hit command, I think by default is command K and B to hit the sidebar, hide the sidebar. Uh, I've got it as a co control and S. And um, the other super speedy uh, helpful tool is when you hit Command NP, it brings you this drop down where you can search all your files in the project. So let's say I want to search only for my style sheet, which is main.css. So if I start typing main, it will bring up the drop down and list all the files where the MA is included. So as you can see, it also includes the main.js, which is the JavaScript file and then normalize and minified normalize. Okay, so it gives you the most relevant or most uh, the best suggestion at the top and then you can obviously hit the arrow down to flick between these files and if you're happy with the selection you just hit enter and that will open that file for you as a new tab. Okay, so this is very handy command np again and uh, you can also search within folders only. So if you know you're looking for something in CSS folder, you can just start typing CSS and then it would search only inside of it. Okay, so it, now it doesn't include the JavaScript file because we're searching inside of the CSS folder. Again, we find the file, hit enter, it opens in the new tab. And to make it even more faster and uh, speed up the workflow for even more when you hit command and P find the style sheet or file you're looking at and hit at or write at type at after the uh, file name you can start searching within the file itself so as you can see this gives me all the CSS properties inside of the file and then I can start just typing let's say dot boxer to find the boxer declaration and you'll see that we jumped straight into that uh, file. Okay, so you can hit command and P, search for file, add and dot or ID, whatever you're looking for and hit enter and it opens that file in the exact spot. So this is a super fast way how to jump to your CSS and JavaScript files without going to the sidebar and navigating and finding the files through here then maybe searching for dot boxer and command p ma search within the file by including the add and then boxer okay so hope that helps this is a css file from my parallax scrolling masterclass if you're into scrolling animations uh, check it out and uh, hope this sublime text uh, tip helped you I'll, I'll be bringing more sublime text tips over the next com coming weeks uh, let's jump on to the next segment. As you know, the website deconstruction site is finally live. So I launched it last week and uh, it received quite a lot of uh, good positive feedback from, from you. So thanks for sending all the questions and suggestions uh, back to me. One of the default or one of the first uh, deconstructions we looked at was Sebastian Lampen's design creative use of scroll magic and, and green sock. And uh, so if you haven't read it, uh, go check it out. I received a couple more questions. And one of the question was how was the preloading icon created? Okay, so when you load the site for the first time, you'll see this spinning sort of 3d animation scrolling or scrolling, uh, animating sort of in a 3d on around the z axis. So uh, this was created by, let's uh, refresh the site again. This wasn't a green sock animation, this was a purely a GIF. So when you inspect it, you'll see that there is an animated GIF 
which rotates itself. Uh, so this is exported probably from Photoshop and created on the timeline within Photoshop. So this is not created by Greensock as uh, most of the other animations. So this is purely a GIF file, okay, which repeats uh, infinity, infinitely and then disappears once the page is loaded. Okay, so yeah, a few people asked me how this was created. So uh, this is the demystifying how, how this uh, effect was done. Regardless of that, I think it's still a pretty good website and uh, there is a lot of other small animations. So check out the deconstructions if you haven't already and uh, you'll learn how some of the effects were created. And the last thing I wanted to mention today is a very handy PDF book or guide for writing inline SVGs. So when you're getting into SVGs, this is a very handy starting point for you. It's a PDF uh, ebook written by Johnny Trithel. She describes and goes through the step by step how to be in control of your own uh, SVG objects. Uh, so making scalable vector graphics uh, for, for the web. And uh, following these steps, you'll learn how to create uh, any path and uh, any shapes uh, using SVGs instead of using Illustrator and exporting it. This goes through every single element and uh, what, what it means and how to create shapes like uh, this fruit and uh, just breaks it down into each of the path and how to write it from scratch, which obviously we as a front end developers and designers, uh, there is nothing better than knowing exactly what the code does. So uh, writing your own clean SVG, is definitely the way to go or definitely the way to start with. So uh, go check it out. If you want, you can also buy the book and uh, support uh, Johnny's work as well. So I think it at the moment cost uh, ten dollars or something. So uh, chip something in and um, I hope this reference will help you to get started with SVGs. Okay. It goes through the workspace, how to use fills and strokes, text elements. And um, there is also each of these uh, demos has also referred, uh, referred uh, CodePen demo. So you can check it out on, on CodePen play with it, with it as well. So you'll see exactly how changing these SVG values and properties will apply to the final re uh, SVG rendered in the browser. This book is great when starting with SVG. So give it a go and I'm sure it will be very helpful for you. And that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more tutorials, demos and uh, deconstructions from the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development the most. So uh, enjoy your week and I'll see you next time. Bye.